five months, the road to the Grey Cup has reached its final destination, the Sky Dome in Toronto. A capacity crowd is settling into Canada's most spectacular stadium to watch the Eastern Division champion Hamilton Tiger Cats and the Saskatchewan Rough Riders who claimed victory in the West. They are set to decide the 77th Grey Cup here on CBC Sports. Saskatchewan's John Gregory coaches a number of players who could play the hero's role in 89. Kent Austin is one. The starting quarterback is ready to go after a knee injury in Edmonton last week. Tom Burgess is another. He proved last week he is an effective reliever. And Tim McRae, a bruising running back, could also be the difference for Saskatchewan. Hamilton's Al Bruno has several hero candidates. Among them, the quarterback in the Ticats last Grey Cup victory, Mike Kerrigan, who beat the Eskimos in 86. Kerrigan gets the start today, but could give way to Todd Dillon, who played winning football for the Ticats this year. And Tony Champion, the CFL's top receiver, is a serious threat to break open the game. Two teams that were not favored to be here five months ago are Hamilton and Saskatchewan in the Grey Cup on CBC. The build-up, the hype is over. The players are now center stage. It is up to them to perform. There's the signal from referee Dave Ewer. David Ridgeway kicks off. McAdoo starts out from the 14-yard line. A couple of good blocks. And he runs it back to the 37. Mike Kerrigan threw for five touchdowns in the last game they played against Saskatchewan in a 46-40 win. So he knows he can move the football through the air. Kerrigan did not start in the Eastern final against the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. In the second half, he came off the bench as a replacement for Todd Dillon. He threw the only touchdown pass the Ticats registered last week in their 14-10 triumph. The handoff goes to Derek McAdoo, and McAdoo blows his way out to the 45-yard line. That will be a gain of close to six yards. The Hamilton Tiger Cats have some keys, but definitely the biggest thing they have going for them is Derek McAdoo running the football, catching the football. Tony Champion outside at that wide receiver. He's got to be big. Earl Winfield, we put him in there for this reason. He's going to get some wide receiver, but he's going to be in there on the kick returns, and that could decide the ball game. At the moment on this second down play, Wally's the Tilney. And Tony Champion are the wide receivers, and McAdoo is the ball carrier for the first first down for the Hamilton Tiger Cats, brought down by Gary Lewis. Well, we've got to look to see what Saskatchewan's going to do defensively and where Glenn Suter's going to line up today. But we talked about Gary Lewis. Inside pressure, he's got to be there. Eddie Lowe's their best tackler. Outside of Albright, who controls the middle, low sideline to sideline. And Harry Skipper has got to play well. This could be the biggest day of the year for him. Kerrigan reads the blitz well most times and gets that ball away quickly. He was trying to hit champion. Harry Skipper was defending against him. Second and 10. The ball is at the 49-yard line. Here comes the blitz from the outside, and they've got him. Len Suter came from the outside. Chuck Kingdog came up the middle. He come from that outside linebacker position, a 4-4 alignment, whatever you want to call it. They just bring him from the safety up on the outside. He came hard on the blitz. You'll see him at the top of the screen. Kerrigan is forced to step up. When he steps up, the pressure inside gets him. Paul Osbaldiston with the first punt of the ball game, standing at his own 30-yard line. 12.53 is the time remaining in this opening quarter. The ball bounces to Mark Guy at the 21. And Guy tried to maneuver but couldn't escape the grasp. Saskatchewan starting quarterback Kent Austin did not throw as many touchdown passes this year as teammate Tom Burgess, but Ronnie had a better percentage. That's the key. They must control the football, and you do that by percentage. You do it by hitting those eight, nine yarders. First and ten from the 27-yard line incomplete. First pass over the middle intended for Ray Elgar. And they got to try to get that ball to Elgar. Tim McRae. It's going to be fun to watch him today because he's going to be a pass receiver. Even though he can run, I want to see who covers him man to man. Fairholm, we talked about his speed and Narcisse, just what they mean to the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Second and 10 from the 27 yard line, 12 18, the time left, and a still scoreless opening quarter of this 1989 Grey Cup game. 
Austin escapes the pressure, tried to dump it off to Nelson Jones. And it's two and out for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Don't be surprised that the Hamilton Tiger Cats try and go after this one. This was their game plan to try and pressure him back in his own end. Excellent kick by Baker. That's a beauty. Winfield retreats to the 35-yard line, gets a couple of blocks. He loses the ball. It goes out of bounds. I think it is going to be Hamilton ball, but the Riders are protesting that he kicked it out of bounds. I think he did kick the ball. That ball went off of his foot. That was a 23-yard run back. Winfield doing a lot of running, trying to pick up blocking help. And watch and see if, in fact, he kicks that ball out. He makes a lot of good moves, Don, coming back across the field. But that ball's going to come loose. He did kick it, but it was not intentional. That's the ruling of the officials. Sideline pattern for a first down as Wally Zatilney. He's been the busiest tie cat all week with his video camera. I don't know how many tapes he has gone through recording every moment of this great cup appearance. Quickly inside to Richard Estelle for a gain of eight, maybe nine yards. It can be tough in those stadiums. You have to know it's coming and be ready for it. Second and two, they won't get it. Eddie Lowe, the linebacker, made the contact. This is certainly within the range of Paul Osbaldiston, a 42-yard field goal attempt. So Paul Osbaldiston puts it through as the Ticats are first on the board. John Gregory indicated there really wasn't any doubt as to who his starting quarterback would be. He opted for Kent Austin, even though Tom Burgess finished the job against the Edmonton Eskimos last week. Austin runs to the 41-yard line, and Darrell Corbin, the middle linebacker, came over to make the tackle. Although Corbin isn't necessarily lining up at that middle linebacking position. But what he showed you he does have there is tremendous speed. It looked like Austin was going to lay in a, uh, gain a lot of ground, but Corbin run him down. Mike Walker and the rest of them will shut it off inside. But Jim Rockford in the middle in that defense, he can really help those defensive backs, and they know he's there, and they can gamble a little more. Second and four from the 41, the pitch to Tim McRae. McRae will not get the first down. Saskatchewan is going after it on third and inches. Quarterback Kent Austin keeps. He had to get outside the 45-yard line, which it appears he has. Well, I'll tell you, that, that's a great one because all day's a great blocker, and we, we've talked a lot about Mike Walker, his ability. Austin intercepted by Frank Robinson. He was looking for Fairholm, but Frank Robinson got in there. Richard Estelle is back in for the Tie Cats at that spot back position as Kerrigan on first down tries to throw deep. Almost intercepted by Harry Skipper. The two cornerbacks will be tested with Tony Champion, the CFL's leading pass receiver with 95 this year, working against them. Tony Champion makes the catch, a good move to get outside of Skipper. The Saskatchewan cornerback recovers, but not before Champion gets a first down. He appears to be hurt. Winfield is in there, replacing Champion at wide out at his first and ten. Incomplete. Zatilney had a little trouble trying to get away from Harry Skipper. Second and ten from the 31. Hamilton leads 3-0, 6-17 remaining in this opening quarter. Here's the blitz from the outside. Kerrigan gets away from Goldsmith, but he can't deliver the ball to Wally Zatilney. This one is four yards shorter than his previous field goal. It's a 38-yard effort. And like the first hit, two is good. And Hamilton leads by a score of 6-0 with 5.51 remaining in the opening quarter. Tony Champion, the big weapon in the Hamilton attack this year. Their leading receiver with 95. He established a club record with 15 touchdowns. McRae from the 15-yard line on this kickoff return. He runs it back to the 43, stopped by Steve Jackson. Some consider the major upset of all time in the CFL, beating Edmonton last week. Mark Nye with a catch inside the 50-yard line, stopped by Sonny Gordon. 19-yard gain. James Ellingson is in that slot in place of Fairholme. 
sideline pattern intended for Donald Narcisse sits incomplete. Second and ten, Austin for Narcisse, incomplete. Good coverage by Lance Shields. Tony Champion has gone to the Ticat dressing room for further examination of that injury he suffered. Terry Baker with another great kick. This one is going to sail into the end zone, and Zatilny is going to let it go for a single point. So with 409 remaining in the quarter, the Riders are on the board, trailing by five. Saskatchewan showing blitz movement at the line of scrimmage. This draws a penalty fly. The Riders lined up offside. The penalty presents Hamilton with a first and five situation, and McAdoo will be very close to a first down, stopped by middle linebacker Dave Albright. Some quarterbacks have been known to throw in this position. Better on third down. McAdoo gets the call, and if he made it, he just barely got across that 45-yard line. First and 10, Hamilton from the 45-yard line. Winfield on the sidelines will get another Hamilton first down before being forced out of bounds by Larry Hogue. Winfield lines up in that wide-out position, replacing the injured Tony Champion. Derek McAdoo, the ball carrier, with a pickup of about three yards. Kerrigan. Looked as though he was going to run them, throws, and Winfield has another Hamilton first down. First and 10, Hamilton at the Saskatchewan 28-yard line. Over the middle, and did he catch it? Estelle has got it. It was deflected, and Estelle apparently was able to pull it down before it hit the ground. We didn't need the reverse angle on that one. You saw very clearly that Richard Estelle made the catch. First down into the end zone. Champion. Tony Champion went to the dressing room, was retaped, and that is his first play back on the field since that injury. And he responds with a 13 yard touchdown reception from Mike Kerrigan. Kerrigan threw the same type of pass to Wally Zatilny in that 14 10 victory over the Winnipeg Blue Bombers last Sunday. But it was Earl Winfield that made the catches that got the Ticats in position for Kerrigan to throw that touchdown pass to Tony Champion. McCray on this kickoff return. And that's the field position the Rough Riders and their fans have been looking for on those kickoff runbacks from Tim McCray. When a team scores on you, you got to get the momentum back. This does it for you in a hurry. Look at Tim McRae. Watch the move on Donahue Grant and Sonny Gordon. Watch another move coming. I'll tell you, he's tough to tackle, and that you love to start on the other side of midfield. 55 yards on the return. This should be the final play of the quarter. The first down from the 47-yard line, and it's McRae diving ahead for about two, stopped by linebacker Peter Giftopoulos. And that's the final play of the opening quarter. 13-1 is the score. This is Foster's Breakup on CBC. Canada Deposit Insurance Corporation is a federal agency that protects your money when you deposit it with any of our member institutions. Look for our logo, however you bank. CDIC, see how we protect your money. The Riders start the second quarter. Looking at second and eight, the ball is at the 46 of the Hamilton Tiger Cats. They lead it 13 to 1. Austin dumping it off, intended for Milson Jones. And the way that ball floated, that's a dangerous type of throw. He's trying to angle it to the sidelines, and he'll put it out of bounds. An ideal kick down at the five yard line. First and ten from the seven-yard line. The handoff to McAdoo. He gets a big hole and runs it out to the 16-yard line. He'll be about a yard short of a first down. Second and just a little more than one. Jed Tommy gets the Hamilton first down. In Hamilton, his grandfather, Andy Tommy, had been inducted, and after he scored a touchdown, he presented his grandmother with the ball. Derek McAdoo driven back by that hard-charging Saskatchewan defense led by Gary Lewis. Second and 10, the ball at the 17-yard line. Champion is stopped at the 25, a yard and a half, maybe even two yards short of a first down and leading 13-1. 
Richie Hall and Mark Guy are back for Paul Osbaldiston's third down kick. Richie Hall takes it from the 35 yard line. He's hit hard as he's brought down at the 47. 1989 Grey Cup game being played at the Sky Dome, the city of Regina represented in the Grey Cup for the 14th time, the city of Hamilton represented for the 27th time. First and 10, Kent Austin looking to the sidelines, Farrell back in the ball game makes the catch. First and 10 from the 40 yard line. Austin throwing deep for Donald Narcisse, it's knocked away. Second and ten, the fake inside to Milson Jones. There's the pass for Elgar. Now, Elgar, we say, is a possession-type receiver. He's big. He comes across the middle. He's an easy target to find. You throw it up, let him go get it, and he did, right across the middle of the field. First and ten, Saskatchewan from the 24 of the Hamilton Tiger Cats. 10-36, remaining in the first half. Kent Austin looking for Fairholm. He runs out of room in the corner. And the ball goes out of bounds. That's a little extracurricular activity. Rockford and Narcisse on second and ten. Kent Austin drills it for Narcisse. First down at the five. First and goal. Donahue Grant at the safety position. Rockford on the corner. End zone. Touchdown. Elgar. Just a corner pattern. Comes off. Good move. Runs in behind Sonny Gordon. They didn't get the switch made. You saw Sonny Gordon leave him. That means Donahue Grant's got to pick him up. As soon as Elgar saw that, he ran away from the cover. David Ridgway adds the point after. And only five points separate from this is Foster's great cup on CBC. Pass is complete to Richard Estelle. That should be good for a first down. Has not had a pass thrown his way so far this afternoon, but... That block enabled Kerrigan to find the stout. This time he finds Di Pietro, and he's got a first down to the 30. Rocky Di Pietro, who will celebrate his 34th birthday in January. He'd like to add a great cup ring. Tony Champion is the target. He's overthrown. Second and 10, Hamilton. 7.08 remaining in the half. The ball is just outside the 30-yard line of Saskatchewan. And there's the blitz back into his open touchdown. Steve Crane was coming on the blitz. Kerrigan got it away just in time. The result is a 30-yard touchdown throw to Derek McAdoo. And this Ticat offense has been hungry in this first half. That's what they needed to do, get Kerrigan off to a quick start, and boy, they have. Mark Guy on the kickoff return. Guy was tripped up by Daryl Corbin at the 35-yard line. First and 10, Saskatchewan from the 35-yard line. Kent Austin is throwing deep for Farrell. He's got it. He'll score. There were penalty flags, but they were against the Hamilton Tiger Cats for pass interference. A penalty is declined. The result is a 75-yard touchdown. Jeff Farrell on the receiving end of the Kent Austin throw. 75-yard touchdown. What an exciting first half we have been witness to in the Sky Dome. Zatilny running to the outside. He can't get away from John Hoffman. From the 38, it is first and 10, Hamilton. Kerrigan, a sideline pattern to champion. He steps out of bounds, short of a first down. Second and about two. Same type of play, and this time Champion breaks it. First and 10, Hamilton at the Saskatchewan 48-yard line. The pitch to McAdoo, he cuts it back inside. He is running hard. He dove to the 40. Second and two. I can't recall seeing Derek McAdoo running as hard in any game this season. He's had 10 carries for 53 yards so far. Kerrigan throwing for Estelle too high. While the Saskatchewan Rough Riders have the second best offensive production, they also have the league's second worst defense as far as yielding points is concerned. Rocky D. Pietro steps out of bounds with a Hamilton first down at the 13-yard line. 
First and ten. The ball is at the 13. 324. The time remaining in the half. McAdoo following a couple of lead blocks. Breaks the tackle. He'll be close to another first down as he got to the five, maybe even the four and a half yard line. Six plays. 66 yards. Second and two. McAdoo has a first down. Stopped at the one. First and goal. Hamilton. McAdoo, touchdown! The second score of the game for Derek McAdoo. One on a pass reception, that one on a one-yard run. And the Ticats lead by 12. Paul Osbaldiston got them started with a pair of field goals from 42 and 38 yards. Mark Guy on this kickoff return. He started at the 10-yard line. He has speed. Out to the 47. Stopped there by Donnie Hugh Grant. Lance Shields was returning. Earl Winfield's gone to the corner. Put Rockford back outside. You mentioned it early. That's why he is the designated import. Donald Narcisse was the intended receiver. He took some punishment from Jim Rockford. Get to the football and hit somebody when they come in the middle. Second and 10, Austin over the middle, Adamson makes the catch at the 50, first down, Saskatchewan. You see Giftopoulos jump, but look at this, he's underneath, catch is made, there's Jordan, and here it comes, well we won't see him, but Rockford got there. Austin completes the pass to Narcisse, short of a first down. A Saskatchewan has scored on its last two possessions, Hamilton has scored on four of its last five possessions. Second down play. Austin gets the first down with Ray Elgar. First and 10 from the 34-yard line. Austin going to the end zone. Knocked away by Jim Rockford, intended for Narcisse. And I think Rockford's still hurting a little bit, too. He's keeping that right arm right down at his side. Second and 10, and Allenson the it as a first down. First and 10, Saskatchewan from the 16. 120 remaining in the half. Austin throwing for Ellenson. First down inside the five. First and goal, Saskatchewan. Austin will put it up again. Narcisse. Did he get in? Uh, it's got to be a touchdown. If they don't give him a touchdown, I'm not going to believe it. You bet you it was. It took a moment, and you heard the crowd react as the official raised his arms after conferring with another of the officials. And they give Donald Narcisse the touchdown on the five-yard throw from Kent Austin. And again, only five points separate the Eastern champion Hamilton Ticats, the Western champion Saskatchewan Rough Riders. But Kent Austin has been working on that left corner position of the Ticats after Lance Shields went up. You gotta do that, boy. I'll tell you, anytime you get a starter out of a ball game, you go to the replacement. They they tried Rockford there, but they were getting hurt inside. They feel they're better with Winfield as an athlete and keep Rockford at home in the middle to help out deep. Wally Zatilney will return this David Ridgeway kickoff. finally brings him down at the 32 a run back of just 10 yards and he ran a long way to get 10. Sam Lunks at the moment replacing Derek McAdoo who must well for at least one play there's the drop Jed Tommy will get five not much more second and five a first down Hamilton Rocky D. Pietro he tried to pitch it out, he loses the ball, Saskatchewan, Vince Goldsmith has it. One second left in the half. You see the zone defense, they drop it out of there, not taking any chances. DiPietro makes the catch, Wiggins makes the tackle. Right here he thinks he can lateral the football, but what's coming in from the left of the screen? There it is, Glenn Suter knocks it away, and the Saskatchewan Rough Riders are going to get to kick a field goal with one second on the clock. The ball will be spotted at the 50-yard line. The Grey Cup record is 52 yards. This is going to fall short, and Zatilny will run it out. 
And that will end the first half as Zatilny is taken out of bounds. And what a wild, entertaining first half we have been witness to at the Sky Dome. We are 13 yards away from a record on kickoff returns. And Mark Dye is going to get it right here. Out to the 47-yard line, ideal field position for the Riders to start this second half. This should be a, the draw play to Milson Jones. Second and seven. Austin throws complete to McCray. He'll get a first down, taken out of bounds by Gordon. Saskatchewan might attempt to find out just how healthy he is. Well, you got to find out if he can move. Nelson Jones drives ahead inside the 50-yard line. Second and five. Austin looks over the middle. Elgar's got it. First and ten, Saskatchewan. The ball is at the Hamilton 38-yard line. Incomplete. McCray got tangled up with the linebacker, Peter Giftopoulos. Forward pass in Hamilton number 90. First down. That's what we wanted to see coming into the game, Don. How will they handle McCray coming out of the backfield one-on-one? -on -one? See, he's wanted to throw it a lot earlier. He was forced to hold it because Giftopoulos grabbed McCray, so he had to take the hit. Deep throw for Guy. Incomplete. McCray taken out of bounds by Corbin. He'll have a gain of two yards, but on third and seven, the Riders send out the field goal unit. In that second quarter, these teams scored 35 points. 21 by Saskatchewan, 14 Hamilton. The breakup record for points in the quarter, 27. Winnipeg scored that against Hamilton in 1984 in a 47-7 win. That ball hit the upright, but went between them. It deflected off the upright and fell over the bar between the poles. That has brought the Saskatchewan Rough Riders with him, too. But there have been occasions when the ball has bounced the other way as well when it has hit the uprights. Wally Zatilny is hit as he hurdles his way into the 32-yard line. Kerrigan does have that quick release, one of the prime reasons that Al Bruno decided to start him, anticipating the same type of defensive performance from Saskatchewan. McAdoo stopped at the 35-yard line, a pickup of two yards. 10.44 remaining in the third quarter. Carrigan to Rocky DiPietro, first down. First and 10 from just across the 45. Bit of a counteraction with McAdoo, but it didn't fool Chuck Klingbell. Vince Goldsmith got upfield. That forced him in close to the line of scrimmage, and then Klingbell is, is so powerful, he just got penetration and makes the hit. Out of Northern Michigan, a teammate of Bobby Jurison when he played at that school and was recommended to the Rough Riders by Jurison, and they were happy to have him around when James Curry walked up. Well, I think he did. It's hard to believe he didn't play before that. Him and Jurison coming out of the same school as teammates, that's two good ones. Second down pass for Champion. Don, you have a tendency in a zone defense to get lazy. Harry Skipper's coming back, looking inside, figuring they're going to throw it underneath. All of a sudden, as he stopped, he just lays it outside, and then Champion goes and gets it. 30 yards for Tony Champion. He has scored a Hamilton touchdown. It is first and 10, the Ticats at the Ryder 38-yard line. The pitch to McAdoo following the block of Jed Tommy. And now Wally Zatilny. And he'll pick up five yards. Matching his uniform number, his teammates responded by taping him to the goalpost here at the Sky Dome. McAdoo couldn't hang on to that throw, and he's upset with himself. This will be a 40-yard field goal attempt by Paul Osbaldiston. He's hit from 42 and 38, and now 40 yards. 8-11 is the time remaining in the third quarter here at the Sky Dome. Provided by Molson Breweries. In addition, they will receive a wall clock, courtesy of Hartwood Woodworking and Design Company, and from Pentax, a state-of-the-art Pentax camcorder. Mark Guy with another exceptional return for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. A run back of 36 yards. Bill Henry made the tackle. First and 10 from the 51-yard line. 
This is McCray coming out of the backfield and finding some room to the 42 of Hamilton. Stopped by Daryl Corbin and Frank Robinson. Now we'll take a look at this. This is kind of an intricate little thing Saskatchewan does. They'll bring Ray Elgard from the slot from the left side. He'll come in. Now he comes in to hold the backer and then Tim McCray just kind of slips out into that open area and look at that move. Turn up field, make a miss and just head to the goal line. That's the overhead view we are able to provide you with because of the Sky Dome roof. Tim McRae, the ball carrier, taking that pitch for about six more. We want to see what adjustments were made at the half. That's one adjustment the Ticats made. They send Corbin after Austin. Well, we talked in the opening about Daryl Corbin. You see him stepping up in there, coming around the corner. Milson Jones doesn't block him. He misses him. And as Austin tries to scramble, Corbin makes the hit. But it's a little bit of a mismatch. He's not quite as tall as Corbin. And Corbin gets that head of speed up, head of steam. You can't slow him down that fast. Milson is more of a finesse blocker rather than a power blocker. Baker trying to angle it out of bounds. What a beautiful kick at the three-yard line. Suter this time stays back in his normal position. McAdoo gets the ball, fumbles it, and managed to get it back. Second and ten from the three-yard line. Kerrigan going for it all with Satilni. He can't catch up with it. He's standing 11 yards deep in the end zone. A high snap. He's going to give up the safety touch with Steve Wiggins on top of him. And now Hamilton will kick off. So 454 remains in the third quarter. Paul Osbaldiston gets the signal. And he sends it deep to Tim McRae at the 12-yard line. McRae is stopped at the 33. About 250 feet up. Tim McRae hit at the 35-yard line and thrown back. That will be a gain of about two yards. Looked like the high snap. He changed his mind and didn't kick it. No way, man. Second and eight. Lorenz tried to get there. He couldn't, but the pass is completed. And Narcisse is heading for the end zone. <laughs> Donald Narcisse had eyes in the end zone. He didn't make it all the way, but 52 yards will do nicely. Oh, you take that every time. That, that's just a well-thrown football by Austin. Into the hole. Frank Robinson gave everything he had. He jumped to get it. He couldn't hit it. And Narcisse adjusted to it on the run, and then you saw the end result. First and 10, Saskatchewan from the 23. 314 remaining in the third quarter. The Riders trail by three. Knocked away, penalty fly. Elgar, the intended receiver. Rockford will be charged with pass interference. It will be first and goal from the one. The bad part here, Sonny Gordon needs the confidence that Rockford will get there. He was beaten, but Rockford went a long way with the ball in the air, but Gordon interfered with him, and it puts it at the one. And the Riders now with a chance to take the lead for the first time. They've got it. Tim McRae, but there's a penalty fly. Offside, Hamilton. The Riders are in front. Rider pride is alive and flourishing under the Sky Dome as Saskatchewan has moved in front, 33-30. They just keep coming, you know, that they've come back, as we heard at halftime from Donnie Moan and Matt Dunnigan. We've talked about it the last three or four weeks. It's been that way, so they know how to do it. David Ridgway with the point after, and Saskatchewan enjoys a four-point advantage with 2.51 remaining in this third quarter. We said that the Grey Cup scoring record, 77 points, established in 1956. Edmonton 50 to 27 over Montreal. We've got 64 on the board with still better than a quarter remaining. Derek McAdoo returns the ball to the 35. That was 1984. Oh! Tony Champion. Takes that ball out of bounds. And fortunately for Champion, he's okay. 
Second and four, and it is McAdoo wrapped up for a loss by Eddie Lowe. Ray Robertus centering the ball. The last time in the end zone, remember, it was a high snap that his ball distance was forced to pull down. This one right on target. The kick bounces. Picked up by Richie Hall. And he stopped at the 36. Now Bruno can only hope now that his defense can figure out some way of stopping Kent Austin. Darrell Corbin is back in there. McCray gets the call. There's a penalty fly. Ken Moore, who had that penalty called against him, initially came into the Canadian Football League as a tight end. Then he switched to a fullback. He played defensive tackle, some linebacker, and now he's finally found a spot at offensive tackle. Mark Dye is open. Donald Narcisse made a catch for 52 yards. Mark Dye, the other wide out, makes one for another 52 yards. Well, they've gone after him. They've tried to get Mark deep on uh, Will Lewis. Last time he had good coverage. This time he got behind him. And again, Rockford had to come from the middle of the field to make the player. It was seven. First and ten from the 22 of Hamilton. This could be the final play of the third quarter. Out of the backfield, Tim McRae takes the throw inside the ten. And that's the final play of the third quarter in this most exciting 1989 Grey Cup game at the Sky Dome. La SADC est une société fédérale qui s'engage à protéger votre argent lorsque vous le déposez dans l'une de nos institutions membres. Recherchez notre logo, peu importe comment vous faites vos dépôts. SADC. Voyez comment on protège votre argent. To start the fourth quarter, the Rough Riders, leading by four, are looking for more. They have scored touchdowns in each of the last three times they've scrimmaged inside the 20-yard line. First and goal from the nine. The blitz was coming from the outside. Tim Lorenz couldn't make the tackle, but he forced Kent Austin into the arms of Glanton. Glanton was one of the dominant players in last Sunday's Eastern Final. It's second and goal. Austin throws to the end zone. Fairholm got turned around and couldn't retrace his steps. From 25 yards out, Glenn Suter is holding. It's good. And Saskatchewan extends its lead to seven points. They had to be absolutely amazed when they walk into the Sky Dome. It's a magnificent place. It's packed. That jumbotron's right up their alley. They gotta love it. Short kickoff picked up by Gadavekas. And Hamilton will have great field position. First and ten from the 51-yard line. Kerrigan didn't throw this ball the way Kerrigan could throw. Watch, it's going to flutter on him. And that ball's fluttering. Glenn Suter, we talk about Rockford going to the ball when it's in the air. That's Suter's job also. And Suter gets there in a hurry, goes off, picks it off. Watch Di Pietro. Now he's inside. Looks like he's open. But look at this. When that ball gets there, Suter gets there. The Riders have great field position again. First and ten from the 52. There's the pitch to Elgar, and he's going to throw it. And this one will be intercepted. Will Lewis picks it off. And you can see that one coming because Elgar didn't get anywhere near what he wanted onto that football. Lewis waited for it. Successive turnovers. Dan Suter's interception. Will Lewis's interception. Kerrigan will put it in the air again. Estelle can't make the catch. 12 29 remaining. It's second and 10. Kerrigan flushed out of the pocket, being pursued by Lewis. He's in big trouble. Kringbell has got him. In all the games we've done this year with Hamilton, Don, how many times have we said, if you can force Kerrigan to th pull it down and have to move around with it, the advantage goes to you. They're in a defense. They're going to get the pressure. He runs out of there. Here it comes. Lewis is after him. He's not. A, you're not going to throw the ball very far if you're right-handed that way. He needed to keep coming and take his chances. But that is the key. Don't allow him to throw on time. The second sack for Klingbell. 
Osbaldiston with a good third down punt out of the end zone taken by Richie Hall at the 47 yard line. He's tackled at the 42. Well, the feeling's great, but look around us. This is all Saskatchewan in here. Look at the green. It's great. Okay, thanks, Brian. Don? Thank you. Klingbell gets a quarterback sack for Saskatchewan. Grover Covington responds for Hamilton. Second and 19, Milson Jones upset at the 50-yard line. And John Gregory's team sends out the punting unit. So Tilney and Winfield wait for it at the 5. Low snap. Baker attempted to angle it to the sidelines. The Tilney prevents it from going out. And he runs it back to the 28. Derek McAdoo, the ball carrier, stopped at the 34-yard line. Second and five. And the defense was ready for Derek McAdoo. Gary Lewis is the man who made the tackle. Osbaldiston stands at his own 20-yard line for this third down kick. Another good kick by Osbaldiston. Richie Hall takes it at the 28. Austin was looking for Tim McRae. It will be second and ten. A game that gained considerable recognition for the Alouettes using staples. Another fine punt by Baker. Winfield takes it at the 23. There's a reverse with Gordon. This block is set up. What an opportune call for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Al Bruno had Winfield reverse it to Sonny Gordon, not normally a member of the punt return unit. Hamilton has started a drive in Saskatchewan territory, believe it or not. Lee Knight. As a first down at the 34. Hamilton at the Saskatchewan 34. Gary Lewis gets the quarterback sack. And Gary Lewis obviously liked what he saw. Second and 16. The Kerrigan pass intended for Champion incomplete. He is protesting that he was interfered with. Champion going deep on Skipper. Gives him a step. Trying to go by him now. Skipper definitely grabs him, but then he's the one that ends up falling down, and Al Bruno may have every right to complain. Paul Osbaldiston with a field goal attempt of 47 yards. It's good. 37-33, 621 remaining. Saskatchewan in front. He thought that Tony Champion was interfered with by Harry Skipper. Tim McRae on the kickoff return, waits for the block to form, and then runs it back to the 37-yard line. I know he has a legitimate complaint, but you really can't holler at him like that. They will get you, but he was right. Austin, with time, looks for Fairholm incomplete. James Ellingson has a first down for Saskatchewan. First and 10 from the 52. They fake the draw, now they throw to James Ellingson. He will get about six more. He has a couple of snakes as pets, one of them a boa constrictor. One of the reasons he has problems trying to find a roommate. Don Narcisse with a catch for a first down at the 37. Only Sam Echeverry has passed for more in a Grey Cup game. 508 yards in 1955. Tim McRae. Gets about eight, and the Riders have to be happy with the way they have maintained possession and put this drive together. They line up in that short yardage offense, and they get the ball to Tim McRae. That will be close to the first down. Kent Austin over the middle. Ray Algard has a first down at the 15. First and 10, handoff inside to Nilsson Jones. He tries to break free, but is prevented from doing so after a gain of about three. 2.20 is the time left to play. Second and seven. Austin looks to the end zone. Mark Nye is out of bounds. Will Lewis goes to the football very well, but he wasn't pushed out of bounds. His momentum when he caught it put him out of bounds. 
David Ridgway will attempt another field goal. And he puts it through. And Saskatchewan again leads by seven with 158 left to play. Harrigan over the middle to Lee Knight. First and ten, Hamilton. Good block by Jed Tommy that time for Lee Knight. Rocky D. Pietro, a gain of eight. And he got there to make the tackle. The clock running, the handoff to McAdoo. He's got the first down and more. Carrigan looking, incomplete, a penalty fly. No, no flag. No flag. He really upset. Champion goes down, gives an inside move, tries to go outside of Skipper. The ball's going to be thrown. I think you have, you, you've got to call that now. Yeah, that's twice Skipper has gotten away with it, and it's happening right in front of him. That's not a very good call. Second and 10 from the 42 yard line, 119 remaining. Carrigan for Winfield. This time there is a fly. Winfield's facing back to the football. When Wiggins is coming that way, he must turn and look Forward for the ball. Forward pass interference. Saskatchewan number 24. First down. The ball is at the 12. First and 10. 113. The time remaining. McAdoo, the ball carrier. He gets inside the 10. A gain of three. 56 seconds remaining. Carrigan is in trouble. Gets away. Throws. Incomplete. Intended for Rocky DiPietro. 48 seconds remaining. Third down. Hamilton into the end zone. Touchdown! It's only fitting that you go to champion. He's done it for you all year, but I'm going to tell you, we got a perfect look at that play. I can't believe he caught that ball. That's a great catch. We are tied at 40 with 44 seconds left to play. Watch the ball. It's over the wrong shoulder, but what's the ability of champion? Jumps, spins in the air, and pulls it down. Yeah, don't do it any better. What a great catch. See, Skipper's not going to try to let him get around him and upfield. Kerrigan threw it early, but look at champion go get the ball. Saskatchewan's got 44 seconds to get downfield, but boy, that was a third down situation. That's a great catch. Well executed. Tim McRae on the return. Stopped at the 36 yard line. But you got to try to win it, too. Austin going deep for Narcisse. Penalty fly. That that ball was uncatchable. As a result, no penalty. It's second and 10. Austin to the sidelines for Elgar. He's got it at midfield. 25 seconds the time remaining. Great throw. 23 seconds the clock running the time remaining. Mark The clock is running, 19 seconds. I think they're going to run this football. No, they're not either. Sideline pattern, another first down with Mark Dye. And this is definitely within the range of David Ridgway. Nine seconds is the time left. The man on the spot. A 35-yard attempt for David Ridgway. It's up. Uh, just squibbing ahead. You got linemen up in front. Kicking it to the sidelines into the hole. Picked up there by Steve Jackson. He's going to return the kick. And it's picked up by Suter. He runs it out of bounds. The Riders have won it. has been able to do before previously in Saskatchewan, and that's win a Grey Cup.